The Kansas Jayhawks leap five spots to the top spot of the USA Today men's basketball poll. The offense of the Jayhawks has shined under new coach Bill Self. They've shot 50% from the field, 83% from the charity stripe. Monday night, a meeting in Fort Worth against TCU. There is Coach Self. They benefited from a crazy week in the top five. Here's the old top five. UConn, of course, on top. Duke, number two, Arizona, and then Michigan State and Kansas. And then look at the new top five. Kansas just uh, ricocheted all the way up there to number one, followed by Florida, Kentucky, UConn, dropped to four, and then Missouri. Bill Self's journey to the number one ranking, the first of his career. Nice resume, no doubt anyway, but this was a high. KU up early, Jeff Graves with a block right there. We're going the other way. Miles will do the rest. Miles, good move. Nice. Seven points for him. Kansas up eight. They had 13 turnovers to Kansas in the first half, but seemed to get away with it. Hawkins to Nash. Kansas up four. Closing moments of the first half after a miss by TCU. Judy Chinweezy will do something no one expects to happen. The desperation falls. But the Jayhawks left just one at the break. Nucleus Smith. He's been lifting. Kansas only up two. They were playing without starting guard Michael Lee, who broke his collarbone during practice. The Fort Worth native Keith Langford to J.R. Giddens. Langford, though, at 24 points, 12 points for Giddens. And then Jeff Hawkins, three of his 19. Kansas was 10 of 21 from three-point range, and in the end, it wasn't much of a contest. Cat in Notre Dame, Mike Bray's Irish won last year by 21. First half shot clock at three. Travis Diener knocks down a three. He had 12 points and seven assists. Later in the first, Scott Merritt will turn around off the glass. Merritt, 18 points, 12 boards. Marquette up 20 to five. Second half, Chris Thomas here. Torian Jones there. Two of his 14. Irish coming back. They're down 10. Under four minutes left now. Steve Novak is open for three. Novak had five threes, a career high 21. Marquette 5 0. Oh, they win. Maryland suffered overtime losses in this event in 2000 and again last season. The Terps pushed into extra minutes again this year against Wisconsin, who was ranked 13th. Terrapins 25th, both teams 3 0. Oh, and Daryl Starberg catching Sun DJ. Minute and a half to go. Devin Harris's fifth three of the night. He had 24. Final ticks. Mike Patrick, Bill Raftery. Wilkinson. Go! And you win, Cowie got it! A mix from a dairy farmer. Mike Wilkinson on a blue mound, Wisconsin. He had 14. Can Gary Williams, can a brother get a timeout? Six seconds left. Last chance. John Gilchrist, no good. Rebound. Nick Kaner Medley hits one of two ties at a 61. Two seconds left. Intercepted. G.J. Strawberry for the win. We are going to overtime. Maryland always got to go to overtime in this event before OT. Can we get Gary some water, please? No, this one. Can you take off the cap, please? Oh, it's not easy coaching in this thing. Overtime, Jamar Smith, strong, on his way to his fourth double-double in four games. Wisconsin would answer with Boo Wade. The head fake. Badgers up by two, but it's Jamar Smith again. He had a career-high 25 points to go along with 12 boards. 30 ticks to go. Badgers are down five. Problems with the pressure defense. Gilchrist forces the bad pass. And there's DJ Strawberry. The steal and the finish. Maryland survives at overtime, 73-67. Daryl's in the stands, and he is one happy day. Tough to get tighter in the rankings. 11th ranked Illinois and number 10, Roy Williams, North Carolina Club. So how close would the game be? First half, Luther Head going up. Nice catch, the alley-oop and the jam. Next possession, Rashad McCants. <laughs> Rashad McCants added 20 points, including the emphatic two there. Late in the first half, tied at 33. Where's Jawad Williams? How's the hip pointer? Looking good from three. Then, we didn't edit a thing. Illinois throws away the inbounds. There's McCants. Hip pointer's not a problem. Another three. Tar Heels were up six at the break early in the second half. Williams, the drive and the shot. More McCants off the miss. Throws it down. 41-33 heels. Jackie Manuel, the block. Shot clock running down. No problem for Aaron Spears. Hits the desperation shot. Then D. Brown had a rocky night. Well, he's prior to this shot anyway. From the corner three, and he's fired up about it. Carolina coming back up four. Sean May led UNC in scoring. Although he
they didn't score there. Jackie Manuel there for the tip. Raymond Felton, the penetration and the miss. Williams follows, heels up three. Illini trying to come back. Head the drive. Mazes, I don't think so. Carolina doing the little things. The difference between winning and losing is just minuscule. And what you have to do is do all the little things that you can control. You may not be able to control uh, D. Brown going three for 17, but you can control getting a hand in his face on 17 shots. Roy Williams uses only seven players in North Carolina, able to beat Illinois by seven. Wake Forest ranked 16th, hosting Indiana. Patrick Ewing Jr. is first collegiate start for the Hoosiers. Instead of uh, center George Leach, these two teams undefeated in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. As you can see, they've both done pretty well in this event. Patrick Ewing Jr. trying to do pretty well in his first start. The freshman takes it right out of Eric Williams' hands. Ewing had eight points and nine boards. Hoosiers are within three. Here's a top ten nominee, Trent Strickland. The steal and the finish. Demon Deeks with 10 first half steals. Wake with a 12 point lead. On the inbound, another steal. It's freshman Chris Paul. He had a career high 20. Mike Davis said about Paul, he was like fantastic. Eric Williams had a huge night. Paul's in the rebound here, surrounded by some Indiana defenders. And here we go. It's a Demon Deacons blowout. Indiana just got steamrolled here. Watch this. Two Hoosiers in the passing lane. Williams with an easy dunk. He had a career high 25. And Wake Forest blows out IU 167. The most lopsided game in ACC Big Ten Challenge history. That's why they play the games. Matt Walsh to Benel Colas, the one-handed jam. Walsh on his birthday, 15 points in that pass. He's 21, happy birthday. Second half, Gators up nine. Anthony Roberson, that was his first three of the, wait, uh, that's his second three. Uh, that's his third three of the night. Finished with four threes with 20 in all. Gators are winners. Easy. Coppin State, 1-24 all-time against the Big 12. Their lone win came against Missouri exactly six years ago. And they were at the Hearn Center on Tuesday. Final home opener ever at the Hearn Center. They move into a new arena next year. Darren Bradley the steal. Mizzou committed 19 turnovers, and Coppin State is up six early second half. Still second half, Lennis plays it to the rack. Here come the Tigers. That's a top 10 nominee. They're down five. They were up three at this point. Thomas Gardner, the miss. Kevin Young, the finish. His only hope of the night. Tigers haven't lost a home opener since 1973. Bar and Chris Perry in the house, as the kids say. First half, Bernard Robinson, Jr., the steal. Great pass to Deion Harris, 14 for Harris. Wolverines up 33-27 at halftime. Second half, Julius Hodge, 25 points, 8 boards, 5 assists. Double fall, Wolfpack hanging around. They're down only 8. A little later, Daniel Horton crossing over. Two of his 16, Michigan. They are 4-0. They take it 68-61. Tommy Amaker's 100th win as a head coach. So it looks like the ACC is on its way to another overall victory in this series. It'll be the fifth straight year they've done that. They got Kevin Book out, little turnaround. And Oklahoma will go up seven. Book out had a nice first half. In fact, Kevin Book out with more points than the entire Golden Lions team at halftime. 11-9, yeah. No way. He finished with 14 for the game. Second half, Sooners up five. D'Angelo Alexander. Length of the floor, he had a game high 19, and the Sooners win 94 to 24. But it gets harder Saturday. They play at Michigan State. The Blue Devils. How do you feel about the number six? Three and one Michigan State, ranked number six. Duke also three and one, also ranked number six. Ironically, guess how many career wins Coach K has entering the game? Come six, on. six, six. No way. Side of the Devil with the Blue Devils. All we know is this: Sheldon Williams, Steve. All right, finished with 16. Okay. Blue Devils in double figures, four of them. Duke held the Spartans to just 40% shooting. Michigan State had 20 turnovers, 17 in the first half. Chris Duan with 10 points. Another Spartan turnover. Luol Dang with a steal ahead to Daniel Ewing. Tom Izzo not happy. I just played scared. I couldn't believe the first 10 minutes of that game. I've never seen anything like that. Not at Kansas, not anywhere. I've never seen anything like that on TV. Wow, he's not happy. Michigan State, turnovers, 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 and they only scored 24 points in that half. Chadwick Randolph inbound, somehow gets wide open for the easy jam. Where's the defense by the Spartans? 11 points for Randolph. Everything working for Duke. Duhon in trouble. Who cares? He forces it up, banks it in off the plexi. 
Duke wins easily. You heard Tom Izzo before. You haven't heard anything yet. No question. I owe an apology to all of you. Uh, that was a disgusting um, display of of uh, basketball. I don't think I've ever been more disappointed in nine years I've been the head coach here and a team's performance. It's about time some boys become men and uh, and if that means I'm calling them out, I am calling them out. That was a ridiculous display that first half and uh, I just unexcusable. Coach Izzo being very honest there so all his players can hear him. Meanwhile, Duke remains perfect in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Now 5-0, and oh, but more on this game. This was the most lopsided loss for the Spartans at home since a 25-point beating by Minnesota in 97. Doesn't get any easier for Michigan State. Their upcoming schedule, Oklahoma, Kentucky, Syracuse, and then they start conference play. 15th ranked Georgia Tech against Ohio State. Let's meet Ishmael Muhammad, nicknamed the human highlight. Dominic Wilkins is on the phone with his lawyer right now. Ishmael Muhammad, he's a forward, hails from Atlanta, has the team's highest vertical leap at 35 and a half inches. Wow. And he was selected the 2003 MVP of the preseason NIT. But he can't jam there. The ball is stuck. He was fouled on the play. Later in the first, Muhammad got the shot blocked. Watch him hustle down the court. Makes the block on Ricardo Billings at the other end. He was called for a foul, but great hustle didn't sulk. Less than 30 seconds left in the first. Muhammad the jam. Tech led at the break, 34-23. More of the same in the second half. Jared Jack said to him, I asked him if he's trying to get on SportsCenter's top 10 plays. He's making regular occurring appearances. They need to hire him up there. Not a bad idea. The human highlight in Georgia Tech, an easy winner. Clemson and Purdue, the Purdue senior, Kenneth Lowe, leading the Boilermakers into this game. We flash back to Saturday in a game that lasts till the wee hours of the morning. Lowe had 22 points in Purdue's upset of then number two, Duke. He was named MVP of the Great Alaska Shootout. In the first half of this game, Lowe from three land puts Purdue on the board. It was a pivotal point in the game, as you can see on the scoreboard. More from Lowe, starting to heat up. What else can you say about Lowe? Another three, even with a hand in his face. Lowe scored the first nine points of the first half, actually beating Clemson by himself nine to eight. Second half, Lowe gets high. Drops another three, keeps Clemson from making a run. He finished with 24 in the Purdue win. Right to the season, spoke about senior Andre Emmett's decision to stay at Texas Tech. Said night it was no decision for him. It was either he came back to Tech or play for a grocery store. Mm. Emmett, good spin move. 10 of 16 from the field. He had eight points at the half. Red Raiders up eight. Second half, Emmett, good from there. Came into the game averaging 21.6 points with Andre. And then the pull-up, J. 27 points. The only Red Raider to score in double figures. Texas Tech wins easily. Number 18 in defending champion, Syracuse, visiting St. Bonaventure. The alley-oop to Akeem Warwick, who doesn't miss from there. And then second half, more orange men off the steal. Warwick. This is what this man can do. The monster slam, 27 for him. Syracuse cruises, 87-78. 24th ranked Gonzaga at Lorenzo Romar. And the Huskies, they were slightly off all night. Romar was his team. Will Conroy the miss there. Nate Robinson. Back to Conroy. He's got to figure this out. The baseline, uh, not exactly. Nate Robinson trying a shot on for size. No field goals final. Seven minutes, 15 seconds of the half. That was Anthony Washington giving it a try. Washington again. How about Robinson on the miss? Stay with me here, folks. Robinson again. Hans Gasser. His turn to miss. Gasser again. That'll be the 10th straight man. Brandon Roy had miss number 11 in a row. Roy again on 12. Second half is the same story. Roy would miss from three. That was 13. Robinson trying it again. How's the shooting confidence? Mike Jensen, Bobby Jones, Roy, Trey Simmons. Haven't mentioned his name. And Akeem Rollins. This is your two-for-one special. Shots 18 and 19 in a row missing. Roy from three. Rollins from down low. Roy the miss. Finally, with just under 13 minutes left to go in the game. Curtis Allen actually hits a shot. 15 minutes, three seconds without a field goal. Uh, yeah, they lost the basketball game. 
Memorial Arena with an Elton John concert last month. Very nice. Yeah, just want to get the EJ reference right. in there. Uh, Thursday, the uh, first ever college hoop game there, number two Florida and Central Florida. That was David Lee. Here, Anthony Roberson steals the layup. Almost foul. He had 12 points. Matt Walsh had 19. They were the only Gators in double figures. More Roberson here. And Florida takes care of business, or business, if you will. 59-39, the uh, Gators are 4 0 Rick Pitino's Louisville Cardinals oh. taking on Western Kentucky. You know, Pitino has an open 0-2 as a head coach since the 82-83 season with Boston U, Steve Brissett. You, the, the Terriers. There you have it. Taquan Dean pushing it, and Alahaji Muhammad Jr. for the uh, lay-in. Seven Cardinals finishing double figures in this game. Francisco Garcia so talented with those long arms. The dish to Luke Whitehead, 10 of 13 from the field. And then Whitehead. He's a thief. Little give and go and the exclamation. 22 points, 10 boards for Whitehead. Uh, Rick and Louisville win by 30. Game home winning streak at the Irwin Center hosting Wofford. First half, that's Brandon Mouton. Times out the uh, pass and goes in for the finish. Two of his 20. He had 15 of those 20 in the first half. It's 41 to 20 Longhorns. Wofford looking for the breakaway. Three Wofford players. Royale Ivy all alone on defense. And the one man defender blocking Howard Wilkerson off the backboard. That's the top 10 nominee. Second half. Brad Buckman behind the back. Hits James Thomas. Elbow ball. That puts Thomas over 1,000 career points. Longhorn second 100-point game this year.